So today we're going to make, be making these little flying Fs, and you can interpret that however you want to. <laughs> um, originally, I was I was thinking about making the little F bombs, um, but I couldn't figure out a way to make them original. Like it's a round ball with a little cap on the end and an F on it. So it just dawned on me, well. I could make these. It's a little risque. I'm not sure that too many people will be making these, but I feel like there is a little market for them because there's a few other kind of more risky type of crochet out there that I know a few people have been making. Um, I have not got into that, but um, I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. To begin, we are going to just make our loop or our magic circle or your chain two, your slip knot, whatever you are used to making when you crochet in the round. And since I made this pattern a couple months ago and didn't write it down, I'm just kind of winging it. From what I can tell, it's rounds of eight single crochets, and I believe it's 16 rows. So we might have to do a few, little bit of counting as we go. So make your um, chain one, and then you're gonna do eight single crochets into this loop. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to be counting my rows in sets of three, so I'm going to go. 8, 16, 24, and then start over again because I know I have um, three rows, three rows, three rows here, three rows here, and three rows here, and then this extra row here. So it should be 16 rows of um, eight single crochets. I better grab a stitch marker. Okay, so let's get going in these rounds. One, two, three, four, five, whoops, six. Seven and eight, and then move your stitch marker if you're using one, and continue into the next round. Nine, ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Move your stitch marker. Seventeen. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. 
So that should be our three rows plus our row um, to get started. So we're, that was row four. So we're starting row five. I'm going to start back at one again and do three sets. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, move your stitch marker, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Move your stitch marker. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So you'll increase your stitch marker by three, five, six, and seven. And I'm just going to grab a little stuffing because we should stuff it a little bit as we go because it's so narrow, it's going to be tricky to get everything in there once it's um, on the bigger side. That was way too much. And then we're going to do our next set of threes, three rows of eight, one, two, three, four, five. Seven and eight. Move your stitch marker. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, move your stitch marker, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. Change your stitch marker, three more rows, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, start again. One. Two, three, four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight. Move your stitch marker. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Move your stitch marker. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. We better add a little stuffing after we change our marker. So eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Now that I think of it, I think I had seventeen rows. I had fifteen, and then my beginning row and my end row. too far without stuffing this. Um, if you're having a hard time getting your finger in there, you can always use your um, crochet hook. It's a little trick here, but once you grab a, get a chunk in there, it works not too bad. Um, remember when you're stuffing, you don't want to overstuff where you can see the white of the stuffing in between your stitches. If you do find you're always um, seeing your, your stuffing behind your stitches, try going down a size or two in your crochet hook so your stitches are a little tighter. And that should make a huge difference. Like if I, I'm using a 4.25, but if I were using like a 5.5 .5 or a 6 for this, you would be seeing white everywhere. Okay, one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I feel like I'm getting smaller here. Ten, eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that is, um, by threes, that would be 15 plus my very first round. And we'll do one more round 
before we close. I think it looks a little smaller, but I think that one's just been um, moved around a lot and played with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we should have our 17 rows. So one row. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and then our ending row for seventeen. It's definitely a touch smaller, but I think my stitches are a little tighter. So where's my stuffing? Finish stuffing. Um, if any of you guys have an easier way to do this, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, it seems to work not too bad. I can feel a little bit of a bump there. All right, I'm going to take the stitch marker out. And we're going to close this up. So, maybe we should do one slip stitch in there, hey? A slip stitch and then tie it off. Leave a little bit of a tail for sewing. Just close that up. This is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. So we'd like to try and get it nice and tight, but if you can't, it won't be seen as much. I'm going to go through both loops. Just back and forth. And then we'll cinch it up. And hopefully it gives us a bit of a roundness like we have at the beginning. And one more, I guess. And you'll just give that a tug. I mean, it's a little bumpy. It looks a little little gathered. I probably should have just grabbed the outside loops, the front loops, but... And then you'll tie that off. Try and find a stitch you can grab and uh, be able to pull it down inside so you can't see your knot. Okay, and then just bring that down in the center and out the top if you can, side if you can't, so close. 
ghost. There it is. And pull that so you can kind of hide your knot. There we go. Oh yeah, it's a touch smaller. But the rest of it will be smaller too. Hopefully the wings don't look funny on it. For the sides of the F, we are going to do um, two sets of six and then our starting round, which will be number seven. And we are going to make two of those exactly the same. So you're going to make your loop or your magic circle, chain two, slip knot, however you did it. And we are going to put eight single crochets into this loop, just like before. You're going to start with your chain one. And then your eight single crochets. i got to get my knee up so I have a place to put my arm here. Okay. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Grab your stitch marker if you're using one. And now we're going to do um, six rows, and I'll do it the same as before. Two sets of three, counting to 24. So one, two, three, four. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So that's four rows of um, eight. We'll do three more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Flip your stitch marker. 
nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. And 24 and then stuff that and that should be oh I should have counted that sure you get it right to the bottom add a little more if you need to Okay, now make your second one. So you're going to make your loop or your magic circle, chain two, slip knot, however you did it. And we are going to put eight single crochets into this loop just like before. Start with your chain one and then your eight single crochet. I gotta get my knee up so I have a place to put my arm here. Okay. One, two, three, four. Seven and eight. Grab your stitch marker if you're using one. And now we're going to do um, six rows, and I'll do it the same as before two sets of three, counting to 24. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven.
12. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So that's four rows of um, eight. So we'll do three more. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Flip your stitch marker. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-three and twenty-four, and then stuff that, and that should be. Oh, I should have counted that. you get it right to the bottom add a little more if you need to Okay, once you got two done, make sure you got them kind of stuffed about similar, and then we will start um, sewing them on. So you're going to want to grab your pins. And it doesn't really matter which one you put where, but you want to have your... Um, your ends here on the bottom so they're a little less noticeable or a little towards the back so find your top 
And you're going to line them right up the top of that and the top of this. And then just give them a little pin. You want to make sure as you're using about three stitches here. And then when you put the other one on, you're going to skip three, or not stitches, rows. And then you're going to put your other one starting right there. Make sure you got them fairly even. I might sew that one on first. Just to make one of them a little easier. So you're just going to go down underneath um, your stitches. Underneath here. Kind of pull that knot down and in, around so you can't hopefully see it. And then you're just going to grab your two loops of your V on your next stitch. These pins are going to keep grabbing the yarn the way I did that. And you're going to go down into your, um, what would we call this? Let's call it the base for now. <laughs> into the base of your F. And then back up into the next stitch, which is this one. Because there you can see. The main thing is you want to make sure you're not moving around too much because you started at the bottom it's kind of a little easier to tell because you can't go higher than the top well you could but you'll be able to tell that pretty easy and then catch the next stitch <clears throat> And go down and you want to catch right up at the top here If you have to pull it up a little bit. you're not catching your stuffing because you don't want a big white streaks going through. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is getting dry. I need a drink. Coming close to our beginning here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, 
I think I'm all the way around, but I'm just going to put one more stitch in just in case because we don't want to have any gaps. going to tie that off somewhere where you can pull it down and through so I'm gonna go oops I got a bit of a hole there and that's right on the front of course I think I'm gonna grab from up top here Whoop. I'm going to tie it twice, just because I don't always trust in one knot. Grab the same thread that you grabbed for your first knot. <clears throat> Oop. What kind of a mess was that? And then you're going to put it up through your center again. No. See, I pulled that whole mess right through. That's why I like to tie my things close to a hole so I can pull them up and in and it kind of fixes that kind of a mess. <clears throat> okay. So, you've got your one, two, and three, and then you're going to count down three more and then pin bottom of your F now this one is a little trickier because you have to make sure it's nice and even with the top one Oh yeah, I just remembered I had a different way of pinning before. If you go down and then... There's a short one. So that holds it a little better actually. Well, that's pretty good if I can keep it just like that. And you'll just do the exact same thing. You'll go down and in on the base of your F. This one pin is in the way. And then up through the stitch that would have been right beside. And grab the next little chunk. And then back up. Into the next stitch. Keep on checking that it's even throughout. You wouldn't want to get to the end and then realize that you uh, are pulling it out of being even there. Uh, while we're doing this, I'll just mention if you enjoy my videos, if you want to the like button or the subscribe button that helps me out and it also um, lets me know that the videos that I am making are being enjoyed and that I should make more might have that a little 
little bit on the lower side. Also, if you do make something off my channel and you want to share it with me, there'll be a link in the description to um, my craft page on Facebook. And there is a post on there. It has um, a YouTube logo and I think it says YouTube share or something like that. And you can post a photo. again through the hole up and out the top with your other strings. I mean if you like I use my strings to make a little braid and a hanger. Ideally a keychain probably should go on here. But just until I felt like getting keychains out and stuff, I um I don't know why this you know, I my other phone ran out of power just as I was starting to pin the, the top part of the F off. And I went and grabbed an old phone and it seems like it's zoomed in quite a bit. Like you can't even see this whole F. I don't know. Like you could in the other one. Alright. So we will do the wings now and we will be making two of those. Okay, for the wing, we're going to make a loop again. So we're going to start with a chain. Um, leave a bit of a tail. I ended up with four tails together. I wasn't 100% sure what to do with them. But I'll, it would, would have been easier had I left more of a tail at the beginning as well as the end. Alright, so we're going to chain 10. Oh, and I went down um, another hook size. Um, this is a F5 3.75 millimeter. Just so they're a little more compact. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then in your um, second chain from the hook, you're going to do nine slip stitches. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And you're going to chain one, turn, and in the back loops, you're going to do 
eight single crochet or um slip stitches make sure you're in the back loop one two oops I'm not used to using this little hook it feels awkward three Four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you're going to chain two, turn. And in your last slip stitch, what will look like your third stitch from your hook, this one right here, you're going to do, what did we just do? Eight. I already forgot. I think eight slip stitches. One, I should have wrote this down. Two, three, four, five. Oh, well, this is hard. Six. Seven and eight. I should have practiced with this hook. I don't usually go any lower than a 4.25. So then you're going to chain one and you're going to do seven slip stitches. One, oops, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. And again, you're going to chain two and then go into your last slip stitch, which will be the third chain, or yeah, chain from your hook or stitch. And you're going to do seven back down slip stitches. Two, Three, four, five, six, and seven. Chain one, and you're going to do six slip stitches this time. One. Two, three, four, five, and six, and chain two, and then you're going to do six. Down the other side again, just like before, in the back loops always, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you're going to chain one, and you're going to do five slip stitches in the back loop. One, two, three, four, five, whoops, chain 
two and five back down the other side in the back loops one two three I must be crocheting a lot tighter because both my F4 and my, um, these wings even look like they're going to be smaller. And it's five. Chain one. Now you're going to do four in the back loop. One. Two, three, and four. Chain two. Come back four in the back loops again. One, two, three, four. And one more time, we're going to do three in the back loops. Make sure you change one. I didn't say chain one. Two, three, chain two, and come back and do your three slip stitches. One, two, and three. And now we're going to go in like one big decrease all the way along here. Should be about seven. You're just going to put everywhere where there's a, a little rib in your work. That's where you're going to go. So one. So in and through and up and don't go th pull through. Two and bring a loop up. Three and bring a loop up. Four and bring a loop up. Five and bring a loop up. Uh, six. Whoops. And bring a loop up. And seven in your very first loop there. And bring a loop up. And now you're going to bring your th yarn all the way through all seven of those loops and pull it nice and tight and there's your little wing and then you're just going to tie that off and give it a clip we have quite a bit of a tail Okay, for the wing, we're going to make a loop again. So we're going to start with a chain. Um, leave a bit of a tail. I ended up with four tails together. I wasn't 100% sure what to do with them. But I'll, it was, would have been easier had I left more of a tail at the beginning as well as the end. All right, so we're going to chain 10. Oh, and I went down... And, um, another hook size. Um, this is a F5 3.75 millimeter. Just so they're a little more compact. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then in your um, second chain from the hook, you're going to do nine slip stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, 
seven, eight, and nine. And you're going to chain one, turn, and in the back loops, you're going to do eight single crochet or um, slip stitches. Make sure you're in the back loop. One, two, oops, I'm not used to using this little hook, it feels awkward, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and then you're going to chain two, turn, and in your last slip stitch, what will look like your third stitch from your hook, this one right here. You're going to do, what did we just do, eight, I already forgot, I think eight slip stitches, one, I should have wrote this down, two, three, Four, five, oh well, this is hard, six, <laughs> seven, and eight. I should have practiced with this hook. I don't usually go any lower than a 4.25. So then you're going to chain one and you're going to do seven slip stitches. One, oops, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and again, you're going to chain two, and then go into your last slip stitch, which will be the third chain, or yeah, chain from your hook or stitch, and you're going to do seven back down slip stitches, two, three, four, Five, six, and seven. Chain one, and you're going to do six slip stitches this time. One, two, Three, four, five, and six, and chain two, and then you're going to do six down the other side again, just like before, in the back loops always, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and you're going to chain one, 
And you're going to do five slip stitches in the back loop. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Chain two and five back down the other side in the back loops. One, two, three. I must be crocheting a lot tighter because both my F and my um, these wings even look like they're going to be smaller and five chain one now you're going to do four in the back loop one two three and four, chain two, come back four in the back loops again, one, two, three, four, And one more time, we're going to do three in the back loops. Make sure you chained one. I didn't say chain one. Two, three, chain two, and come back and do your three slip stitches. One, two, and three. And now we're gonna go in like one big decrease all the way along here. Should be about seven. You're just gonna put everywhere where there's a, a little rib in your work. That's where you're gonna go. So one, so in and through and up and don't go th pull through. Two and bring a loop up. Three and bring a loop up. Four and bring a loop up, five and bring a loop up, uh, six, whoops, and bring a loop up, and seven in your very first loop there, and bring a loop up. And now you're gonna bring your th yarn all the way through all seven of those loops and pull it nice and tight and there's your little wing and then you're just going to tie that off and give it a clip leave quite a bit of a tail Okay, so now we are gonna sew the wings on and then you'll see what I meant about having all this, all these strings. I didn't know if I should tie them all together and then sew with one. So what I did is I took take whichever one of these you think might be the nicest. I'm going to take the one that looks a tad smaller just because if it's in the back, the back one might show up more. But maybe they're the same. I don't know. So I took the, the top two strings, these two, and I tied them together. Sorry, out of the camera again. Try not to let them twist on you so you know which way they were to begin with. And 
and then I put them both in my darning needle and I just um, oh no I think I did one at a time and I just made it so that there would be a little kind of knot between the two of them just at the top so we got one in there Where's the other top one? I think I did that backwards. No, I can fix it. So the back side will go through one way and the front side will go through the other way. So this is the back side. Sorry, this is really hard to see all this junk in here. So the back side, I went through that way. And then I'm going to take the front side and go in that same stitch but go the opposite dire direction. So I'm going to go where I came out. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go. I'm going to go out the other side. Okay. Now hopefully my strings aren't twisted. And then you'll find the two ends and just pull them in. And then on the back side underneath, I'm just going to tie it really tight and put a knot in there. And then just thread them out through the back of the F, just so they're out of the way. So go in one of the two holes. Seems like it's closer to this side, so I'm going to put it. That, and it's also the back, so that's good. And then give that a good pull to try and get that knot inside of there. And then cut it off. Oh, just like a little hurricane went through here. Okay. And you're going to thread your bottom two ends. No, this one. Sorry, I should have uh, this better decided what I did. So I take one and I just start going in, grabbing a stitch on the bottom, trying to keep that other one out of my way, and then through the wing a little bit, just kind of above where it's going to sit on your F. I could have probably put that down a little lower. You kind of can decide as you do your own. Then I'm just going to go through there a couple of times with this thread. And then I'm going to take my other one and go a couple of times. I keep, I don't know which one it's, nope. Oh, see all these threads just are confusing. And I only have two now. So I'll go through the, both sides. Keep doing that till you feel like it's kind of secure. And hopefully your stitches aren't showing through like mine. <laughs> well, I think this would be a lot easier. Okay, then take your string that you left hanging 
and you're going to do the exact opposite of what you did there. Coming from the opposite side, going this way. And then through your wings a little bit. And then down through the body. Make sure you're catching the piece of the body and you're not just going through the wing. Oh my goodness. Don't we love sewing pieces together? Now, I hope you're making yours a little bit neater than mine. I'm just trying to get through this video so we can get it posted. And then, we need to tie these up. So we'll go, make sure you have one on each side. And I took them up and through the wing. And we're just going to tie it on this side of the wing. And then, so try and get it down. Not there. Oh boy, I'm sorry guys. Try and get it kind of down and come up through the center of them. If you can. It's not letting me. It's so much. So many stitches in there. I just went through that one. There we go. It's going to be really tight, but we got it. Take your other one and do the exact same thing. Try and get it in the same spot. It came up through with the other one. See? And then you're just going to tie them together and then hide them back down the middle somewhere. So we got to go through that tight stitch one more time. Try and get that knot to pull through when we come out the other end. It's going to be tricky. I feel like I'm going to break my little plastic needle. There's my scissors. <laughs> Too hard even on my thumb. Yikes, that doesn't sound good. I don't even know if I moved it any. Oh, I'm going to break this needle. I've never had such a problem. There we go. Oh, golly, now what I got going on with all these stitches. How did I get purple in there? as a case of don't do it the way I did it, I think. I really... Okay. Cut those off and you're done with the wings. So to finish it off, you can either... Cut this off and put a keychain up here in the top, or you can do like I did with this one and braid it and make a little loop. Um, you could get rid of all but one of these. Make sure which one would you want. Probably the one that came from down here and not one that came from, from here. 
and you can make just a loop or you can chain up a few. I think I'm probably going to braid this one again just so it's the same as the other. And that is it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let me know what you think of this. I know it's a little risky. But um, I think there's probably a market for them. I just can't say their name. <laughs> Alright. Um, thanks for watching. Um, be safe. And happy crocheting.